Good afternoon, and thank you for inviting me, especially to Eugenia. And it's a pleasure to be here with all of you. Now, uh, I'm going to talk uh, to about management of neurocognitive impairment. And that I know is, sorry, I'm um, sorry. <laughs> I know it's the hardest time of the, of the day. And for this reason, if it's possible, I can start with a little bit of music. Okay. Oh, so. Whoops. <laughs> okay. Come on. Uh, that's the brain from the functional point of view. The brain can be affected by illness, injury, strokes, different kinds of illness, and it depending on the localization of the illness or stroke, etc., and can we can have one or some other uh, dysfunctions, uh, neurocognitive dysfunctions. It's not the same. An affectation in the frontal lobe, we can have problems with uh, control of behavioral, with uh, executive functions or in temporal law, for example, problems with memory and understanding language. And Okay, having said so, I decided to divide uh, this presentation in three parts, because what can I do when we have these dysfunctions? To arrive uh, to planning different rehabilitation strategies, we need two more steps. Okay, some brief definitions. Neurocognitive impairment is a condition, it's not an illness. Describes decreased mental function due to a medical disease. These deficits could be diffuse if it takes some one other parts, some one other areas of brain and could be affected some of different functions. And focal when it's located, for example, vascular cerebral accident or in the other case of uh, diffuse dementia, Alzheimer, that it takes different deficits are affected. Okay, that's some diseases that cause with neurocognitive impairment. When we, when we think in neurocognitive impairment, we, uh, we used to think in dementias only, but dementias also, different kinds of dementias, psychiatric disorders, there are uh, specific profiles as uh, schizophrenia, bipolar disorders, personality disorders, very related with the HIV and, and other stats, and metabolic, endocrine, infectious process, as you know, encephalitis, the special profile, as you know, that HIV, vascular diseases, uh, some kind of neoplasm could be course with neurocognitive impairment and drug abuse. Also the history of uh, consume, that the active consume. We talk about examples of some neurocognitive functions and its dysfunctions. For example, attention and orientation is the first one that we explore. Uh, getting lost in familiar places, forgetfulness, more forgetfulness as before. Walking memory, the neurology asked yesterday about this, is a, is a complex capacity that allows us to store and manipulate information to solving complex problems. As uh, be in be three, uh, do, for, for example, to do three, uh, three things at the same time. For example, to drive and while listening to the news on the radio, solving a math problem. Um, for example, in executive function is the capacity of planning and carrying out plans or goes effectively. Some difficulties, the patient said that has more difficulties in planning domestic economy than before 
or has most, more difficult than organizing daily activity than before. Praxias is a set of moments with the objective of carrying out a specific action. It's so important to diagnose this. Difficulties in getting dressings, eh, we, can, we can ask, and uh, for example, patients have difficulties to button coat or put socks. Brushing ticks is a simple praxia. A speed on processing information is the time that it takes to do a mental task. Oops. For example, solving problems. Patient can solve problems, but it takes more time than before. Or in understanding news. He can understand news, but takes more time. OK, some redefinition. Uh, as we know, the brain is a dynamic organ capable of modifying neuronal structures that have been injured. It has, it has been found years ago also within your imagined studies that cognitive stimulation is able to improve the altered function and to modify the affected cerebral structures. Neurorehabilitation pretends to stimulate the nervous system to form new neuronal connections and repair and restore brain functions. Even in, if the patient won't be able to, ha to have uh, the same capabilities as before, but the goal the best goal is that the patient achieves an optimal capi capacity in physical, mental, social, and vocational functioning. It's very important, the multidisciplinary intervention in these cases. Uh, as you know also, clinical neuropsychology is a science that studies the behavioral and relationships with the brain. And neuropsychology has the function to evaluate diagnosis, therapeutic intervention, planning rehabilitation, and supervision of it. And OK, come on to do evaluation. We can do. In first, we, we need to know what is happening with these dysfunctions. How to do? In first, it may be necessary in the first inter uh, before first interview, it may be necessary to check previous reports, to review the imaging results, to determine the severity of dysfunction, to think about possible associated complications, and to think about the symptomatological evolution. First interview. Uh, Patient and with family, if it's possible, is a powerful diagnostic interview to obtain information about clinical history of patient to end mediating variables, essentials to the interpretation of the neuro neuropsychological results, age, premorbid functioning, educational level, premorbid personality, and disease awareness. Okay. We have the first interview with the patient, and now we, what can we do with the exploration? Okay. To use, uh, to explore these deficits, we, we need tests. We need tests usefully made by paper and pencil. We have screening tests as the, the first approach to detect the neurocognitive impairment could be made but uh, something, nurse, doctors, etc. After that, we have neuropsychological batteries, complete neuropsychological batteries to, to identify the major deficits. After that, we have also a specific, a specific test, for example, to explore memory. For example, if we know that he has had an accident in the cerebral medium artery area, we can go directly to explore all, all phases of memory and the others also, but the, the, the most uh, exploration could be located in, in memory. Okay, when we have, when we have the psychometry, what, 
what can we obtain with this? We obtain unpreserved capabilities, functions, and preserved functions. You know, certain diseases have a specific profile of data. Okay, and now when we have a diagnosis, a neuropsychological diagnosis, we can plant some rehabilitation strategies. Okay, there are uh, different rehabilitation programs, but in our hospital now we are using Neuronap, it's one of them, and it allows to the neuropsychologist to design an individualized program according to the everyday living of the patient, as well as mediating variables, as I talked before, uh, age, age, social condition, premorbid capabilities are very, um, we need to know. Okay, that's an example, for example, uh, to work executive functions. There is a file on patient has, has to uh, take these activities and put it in the timetable depending on the time that it takes, okay? Uh, we do mm, these files, we can make more or less difficulty. We, we, we can make the, the, the individualized strategy. Another example to work in memory, for example, in here the patient has to be present three ideas and he has to memorize three ideas. That's, he has to to instructions, first it has to start in black, in white, sorry, in white circle until arrive at the uh, black one. After that, he has to memorize to change the shape, continue after to change again, and after to arrive from beam. Okay, two or praxias, two or praxias, for example, this is one on a, this is a sample puzzle. And to work selective attention, patient has to memorize, no, to pay attention in only suitcase, two suitcases and uh, in, in when uh, baggage are in, in motion, sorry. <laughs> okay, social cognition is another word, neurocognitive, impairment, more usually than we think. For example, are altered, social cognition are altered in some neurodevelop, neurodevelopment uh, illnesses as Asperger syndrome or in schizophrenia, is the capacity of empathy. Patient in this case has to decide where's the best phase in this, in this um, picture. Okay, if we have a lot, a little bit of uh, time, we can exemplify by a case. Okay. A uh, neuropsychologist receives a patient from a psychiatric co colleague. This patient has been experiencing memory loss for the past two years. Psychiatrist wants to declare deterioration progress eh, as dementia. 16 years old, uh, she still works as a lawyer in two companies. She explains, the patient explains, that her thinking is slowing down. She forgets about important things related to the work. For example, she forgot to attend a judicial citation. Therefore, she needs to use a diary more often, and she's scared because her mother died from Alzheimer's disease. At the same time, she's having marriage difficulties and issues at work due to her relationships with the younger colleagues. Okay, first interview. We obtain data of clinical history that is, could be interesting to pay attention in uh, about family history, 
his mother, her mother, sorry, died from Alzheimer's disease, no psychopathological history, and um, medical personal background, he's a hypertense, he, is a, he was a mastectomy and gastritis. I said that for the component affective in, in, our, in, in, the, in this case. Uh, respect to the psychopathological background, she had three major depressions episodes without complete remission between them, always associated to the external stressors. That is important data. Treated by pharmacology, no, no strong pharmacology, and some sleep in doctors. And the last time clinical psychological interview, intervention was made. It. Okay. We apply the neuropsychometry and we obtain results. We have preserved capabilities, this one, and unpreserved capabilities. Okay, much inf so much information. Uh, here, uh, my detention is light detention that working memory complex activity is preserved. Maybe it's preserved now, but it's a, a patient with high level cultural and, con and it has to be present this data. And processing speed. Processing speed is a, is a variable that sometimes affect all others, all others uh, capabilities as visual free memory, nonverbal reasoning, Okay, what can we think with that? Conclusions? Um, at this moment, we, there is not enough data to suppose deterioration progress process because uh, is working memory preserved and a speed process of information is unpreserved. Speed information could be affected, could be affected by affective disorders, for example. Uh, at this point, the data obtained, at this point, we can, we can think in a depressive pseudodementia, pseudodementia and affective etiology. Okay, and now we recommend it. Reduce activities to diminish stress, healthier style of life, check depression treatment, coordinating always with the therapeutic team, and some neurocognitive program to work in a speed of processing information and not verbal complex reasoning, and also in the preserved capabilities, in the complex but preserved capabilities. New control after treatment to compare results and observe the evolution. Maybe six months later, maybe if it's now a depression, affective disorders, the symptoms, the dysfunctions could be disappear. But it's not an affective etiology, the symptoms could be there and maybe improve. And sometimes is our our um, is the, the, uh, that will be fine in our clinical practice. And okay, that's all. Some bibliography if you're interested, and thank you for your attention. <laughs> <laughs>